Hello and welcome to the Shoegaze of 93 channel once again. And I have news of Emma Anderson from Lush, one of my all-time guitar heroes. Um, you know, great songwriter, great singer from Lush, has announced that she's got a her first solo album, fully solo album, out on the Sonic Cathedral label, coming out in October, October the 23rd. I think it said. Then we go back. October the 20th, is it? There's a slightly different, some uh, websites are announcing different days. Oh, the 20th of October, okay. Yeah, 20th of October, so we've got uh, parties from Emma Anderson. And of course, you know, she's part of the the duo front woman um, partnership of Lush and she has done like projects before like Sing Sing and Baby Machines but this will be her first fully solo album so what you hear is uh, Emma's ideas and yeah of course she was a big Roland GP16 effects unit user which I am as well so that's where the influence uh, comes in there um, and I, I like the way she she picks like every note like whereas like most guitarists when they get to a certain level they do the hammer on hammer ons and pull offs to like create some legato in their playing but what I like about Emma is that she she actually picks every note which is actually harder that, than when you get to a certain level, when you pick a, picking every note is actually like harder than doing the legato phrasing, because you just get so used to doing the hammer on and pull offs that actually picking everything becomes it's not second nature anymore. You have to like think about it, and yeah, that's something quite unique about Emma's playing. Um, you know, I think. Um, best example of it is probably watching the KEXP session from 2016. I think that's a really good example if you want camera work zooming into Emma's guitar then you can actually see what she's doing there. Um, yeah so KEXP Lush session is um, I really recommend it for seeing Emma's talents. So yeah um, she's already got uh, one single out um, which is called uh, bend, was it bend around the bend or something? <laughs> Sorry, I, I lost it. Hold on, I was on this website, wasn't I? This one. So she's got one single out from the album already, which is Bend the Round, it's called. This one here. And yeah, I mean, it's, of course, it's got the dream pop elements, lots of reverb going on. Um, just real, a chilled out track. I just literally listened to it literally like two minutes ago and you can download it already I think it's already it's already sort of released um, so yeah it's already out it came out um, July the 20th uh, today um, so I think it's just mp3 download at the moment I'm not quite sure if it's available on CD or vinyl just yet but it soon will be. So yeah, that's great. She's on Sonic Cathedral as well, which is the place place to be really. Um, Andy Bell's on there from Ride. You've got White White Lands is like the next next big thing. Um, one of the next big things. They sound really good. Um, yeah, obviously they've got a great roster. You've got Senon on there. You've got um, well Bedroom were on there, but they shifted to. Um, some some other label, um, which has actually given them more promotion because they ended up on the uh, on the N NME magazine. So I suppose that was a kind of conscious decision to try and get themselves a bit bigger, unless they're fallen out with Nathaniel Cramp. Um, but yeah, obviously part of a great roster there on Sonic Cathedral, and um, 
you know, Emma is it's an interesting time to for her to release this because it's like Mickey Berenny just came out with her book. Um, I've got it here actually. Uh, I've showed you on the channel many times. Um, she came out with her she came out with her autobiography. Um, what's it called again? Can't remember where I put it now. Uh, right, over there. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, you know, because obviously Lush ended on a bad note. There was a bit of bad blood between Emma and Mickey. So it's interesting, you know, to sort of know the um, the motivation behind releasing this solo album right now instead of like she could have done this any time because Lush split off in 2016. So. Um, she had a lot of time to release something before now. So it's a very interesting um, time because you, it makes you think that maybe she's done it to, you know, to um, annoy Mickey kind of thing, you know, just to, you know, if there is still beef between them, then maybe it's Emma just going to be, you know, being a bit jealous of Mickey's, uh, exposure with the book release and maybe Emma wants her she wants her um, gratitude served as well you know she she wants her piece of the cake and wants to be recognized which is fair enough because Emma is an amazing guitarist and songwriter that I've already said um, and definitely is you know lusher equal parts and um, Emma is just as important to Mickey Berenny for their sound, totally. Um, so, yeah, really, really, um, it's interesting, you know, it's just, I wonder if, what the motivation behind releasing it now was. It, was it to kind of share the limelight with Mickey because of the, the timeliness of Fingers Crossed being released? And, you know, all of the, all of the press that Mickey's got, maybe that's, sort of triggered Emma into like acting and saying, you know, hey, where, where's my say in all this? Or is it, you know, or maybe it was, maybe their, you know, their wounds are sealed and, you know, they, the wounds are healed, I mean, and maybe Emma was inspired by Mickey's, um, Mickey's book and, and Mickey's like recent public exposure. Maybe it was, maybe it works the other way around. Maybe Emma was just inspired, um, which would suggest that they're on good terms now. But I don't think they are because I saw, obviously I saw Mickey at the um, a book signing thing in, uh, in Devon, in the middle of Devon, uh, Newton Abbott, Dartington kind of way. Um, and I think one of the questions was about like, Emma, like one of the questions put, to Mickey or something on the lines of like how are you getting on and it was still a bit dismissed by Mickey like she wasn't really willing to answer it so I still think I still think there's some beef there which is just very unfortunate um, but I think I think there were other players involved in, in that fallout though I think Phil King Phil King obviously had a big part in, in that um, in the demise of the band really because Obviously, he left the band, didn't he, before their last ever gig in Manchester. He he pulled out, didn't he, like a month or two before. And, um, you know, that's sealed the fate of the band, really. So I think, I think, I think there might have been like two teams, you know. I think it was like Phil and Emma were like on one team. And then Mickey was like... Well, Mickey was on her own, I suppose. I mean, she had obviously Justin Welsh from Elastica filled in on drums for the um, the great late uh, Chris Ackland, rest in peace. And but yeah, I mean that just that makes it even more heartbreaking, you know, the fact that you've got a deceased member, Chris Ackland, and they couldn't pull through. You know, they should have. They should have really pulled through just out of respect for him, but you know who who knows, isn't it? I'm not I'm not one to uh, say what goes on. 
But, you know, it's just, it seems like Mickey was on her own. Like, if Chris was there, then maybe Chris would have got Mickey's back. Um, but, you know, who knows who's who's right and who's in the wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what the debate was all about there. Um, it's really hard to make assumptions on that. But who's, who's the, I don't, you know, was there, was there a good guy in that debate? Who knows? I mean, they might. It just seems really bitter and sad. That, I mean, not just because Lush aren't continuing, not because, not be, not just because it's a shame for the Lush fans, but just a shame for them. Like that friendship it has kind of really d dissipated. Um, you know, cause it's sad when you when you look at the history of of Emma and Mickey. It's like they were school friends in like the mid 80s that like they go back such a long time so this is a, it's a shame for the whole friendship sake not not just for the lush fans but yeah um anyway sort of yeah sort of digressed a little bit from the uh, solo album but yeah it's really intriguing and, and um i think yeah this is certainly an artist worth checking out definitely um you know, people just overlook Lush so much. Like nobody talks about them where I'm from, anyway. Um, they're just such a quintessential '90s band that cannot be overlooked. And Mickey and Emma are just, you know, they're icons for 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 women in in guitar bands, you know, or music in general. Just Emma Anderson is just one of these hidden talents that really go unnoticed um her, her thin line telecaster 1970 1972 telecaster is just really iconic there's two massive humbuckers on it um she just gets such a great sound out of them just like listen to songs like nothing natural um and the way she uses the gp16 with the uh the flange noises and the, the wah pedal at the end it's just it's so good and it's just just as good and even better than some of her male counterparts just yeah i really recommend checking this album out because I, I think that there will be some big gems on this um yeah and also begs the question i wonder if mickey brenny will release a solo album because she hasn't done much since the uh the lush split either <laughs> the lush split <laughs> wow what a foreshadowing uh, album title that was split by lush <laughs> but yeah anyway guys so yeah that's that's the news for today um really excited for this um one of my guitar heroes as i stated earlier and um yeah have a good day guys cheers bye <laughs>